Hello data folks, welcome back to another exciting video in our DBT series. In our previous video, we talked about the different types of DBT tests and how they work. Today, we'll dive deeper into the DBT documentation feature and explore how it efficiently generates comprehensive documentation with minimal effort. Documentation is essential for any project, more specifically, DBT auto-generated documentation offers several benefits. It improves communication among project stakeholders. Makes your project more understandable and maintainable as it grows over time. Accelerates onboarding of new team members. Serves as a self-service portal, addressing common stakeholder inquiries. Traditionally, documentation and code have been kept separate. However, DBT adopts a different approach by tightly integrating documentation with code, bringing them closer together. This ensures that documentation is always up to date with code changes, eliminating any lag or discrepancies. DBT extracts much of the information from your data warehouse and your DBT object definitions and incorporates them in the documentation. In addition, you can also include custom documentation in a couple of ways. One way is to use direct descriptions in your YAML files. Preferably we can use the same YAML file where we have configured our tests. You can add a description to a model or a column. These descriptions will show up in the documentation portal that I'll be showing you shortly. I'll talk about the status code documentation later. Similarly, we can add descriptions to the sources. Another way to document your DBT project is to use dot blocks. Dot blocks are blocks of text that can be placed inside a .md file within your DBT models folder. Dot blocks begin and end with the Jinjadocs tag, and you can place your documentation text in between. This approach can be highly beneficial when you need to include large descriptions, formatted texts, or reusable documentation blocks. Suppose the status code is a common attribute in more than one table. By invoking the name of the dot block, you can reuse it across multiple tables or models. This is another example where DBT supports dry coding principles, which stands for don't repeat yourself. Since it's a demo, I have included only one dot block. However, it's worth mentioning that you can include multiple dot blocks within a single .md file. Let's configure this dot block name in our YAML file. This is going to be the similar Jinja construct you're already familiar with, but this time it's doc. Please save all the files that you've updated. Now, let's proceed with the execution of dbt docs generate. This command consolidates all the configured documentation within your dbt project, including information extracted from both your data warehouse and your dbt code, and it generates comprehensive documentation. To make this documentation accessible to everyone, we should use the command dbt docs serve. On the documentation portal, you'll find two main sections. The project section, which lists dbt project level objects. And the database section, which lists objects in your data warehouse. We also have a convenient search box at the top which is highly useful if you're looking for information about a particular table or column. As we navigate further into the objects, you'll notice that these texts are sourced from the descriptions we added in the YAML file. The formatted text you see here is derived from the dot block that we defined. Additionally, this provides information about the tests defined for these columns or tables. It's important to note that we have not specifically defined documentation for the other fields. However, dbt gathers all available information from your data warehouse schema and includes it in this documentation portal. Furthermore, this portal also displays information about the upstream and downstream dependencies. At the end of the page, 
you'll have both the actual source code and the compiled code for this model. Most interestingly, you can select any model and view its complete data lineage information. Overall, the documentation feature offered by DBT is valuable for both team members and business users. That's all I have for today. Please stay tuned for our next video, where we'll deep dive into DBT macros and Jinja. Please do like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you've any questions or thoughts, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.